I've spent the past few weeks now trying to figure out the best way to get a stack of magic cards like this to fall neatly into a pile every time. If you're new here, this is a part of a card sorting machine that I'm building, uh, where cards will need to fall down this slide into said piles and land there perfectly every time, such as this. Obviously, this needs some work, um, so let's take a look at how others have solved this problem first. Looking at some of the trading card sorting machines already on the market, there are a few different solutions in use. Gantry-style sorters, like the Roka, just drop cards straight into short plastic catch basins. Because these catch basins are so short, the cards aren't falling very far, and mid-air rotations aren't really a concern. This means that the finished stacks can only be a few inches high before they risk overflowing. But this solution is nice for machines with a lot of catch basins. On the other end of the spectrum is the CardBot, which only sorts cards into two different stacks. This machine uses motors to continually adjust the height of each catch basin as cards are added. Lastly, it's hard to say for sure, but it looks like the FizzBatch 9000 also uses motorized catch basins to ensure that cards never plummet more than an inch or so. Now let's look at what will constitute a good design solution for our machine here. The machine's going to need to stop sorting each time one of the catch basins fills up to prevent overflowing, so it's important that we maximize the vertical height and the number of stacks that we can fit in this machine here. The gantry can move horizontally about 15 inches, which gives us room for about six stacks, assuming they're spaced very closely together. There's also about nine inches of vertical room from the bottom of the ramp to the desk, which looks like about 700 cards per stack. Putting those two numbers together, it should be able to hold around 4,200 cards. Because each one of these machines is going to need to have six catch basins, the design needs to be economical. It wouldn't be very cheap to put a motor in each one of these. The design also needs to be reliable. It has to catch cards perfectly every single time, and it has to do so without damaging them. Keeping in mind our constraints from earlier, it also has to be compact. It can't take up too much horizontal or vertical space more than the card stack itself. So, with these goals in mind, how would you go about designing such a catch basin? My first thought was to use a big spring. Not just any spring though, one whose spring constant matches exactly the weight to thickness ratio of a magic card. Magic cards weigh about 1.7 grams and they're about 0.32 millimeters thick, meaning that if I could find a spring that depresses by 0.32 millimeters with each 1.7 grams of added weight, it would keep the top card of my stack at the same exact height each time a new one is added on top. In theory, of course, in the real world, there's more to it. The spring shown here is 9 inches tall, it's made from 0.09 inch thick music wire, has 80 coils, and is 2 inches in diameter. Most importantly, its spring constant matches that of the magic cards. However, your intuition might be telling you that a spring this narrow and this tall is likely to buckle under any kind of pressure. In order to prevent that buckling, we'll need to constrain it. We can do so either with a shaft through the center of the spring or a channel around the outside of the spring. Either of these options, though, would impede the motion of the cards, so this design isn't really going to work. There are other options, but we'll come back to those. A way cooler option would be to have spring-like fins coming off of the cache basin walls that gradually increase in stiffness. A thick platform on top would get knocked down onto the next set of fins whenever the weight of the above cards exceeded the fin's stiffness. While I think this idea is super cool, it's also super impractical. It would take a ton of testing and fine-tuning to get these fins right, and even then, outside factors like humidity and room temperature would probably affect its reliability. Since motorized options are out of the picture cost-wise, I'm back to springs. The design I've settled on at the moment is an improved version of the single spring style basin. This time though, there are four weaker springs, one at each corner of the stack. These springs are constrained within a channel to prevent them from buckling, and a thick platform keeps cards level as the stack builds. Each spring is one quarter of the strength of the original one, so the resulting spring constant is exactly what we need. This design is easy to produce, will be cheap in bulk, and can be easily fine-tuned by just replacing the springs if necessary. You may have noticed that I haven't actually printed or tested this design yet at all, and that's for good reason. These springs are so specific that they have to be custom made, which is going to cost me around a few hundred dollars to get a handful, maybe 20 of them, just for testing. So I really want to get it right the first time. To that end, I'm posting this video because I want to hear your feedback. If you guys have any suggestions or room for improvement, feel free to let me know. If you'd like to support the project and fund the purchasing of these springs, there's links to do that down below, as well as a link to join the email list for early access to content. 
As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.